Okay, so I'll start the panel since it's 10 o'clock and I'm really on time with stuff. So Honey, Honey is our village coordinator. Good morning. Good morning. Hi. Good morning. Honey is our village, DEF CON village lead coordinator. So is Pedro, so is Ray's in the back tweeting because emails just came through. And do you want full names or what are we doing? So Tom, ICS village lead, Justin, car hacking village, Nina, biohacking village, Muteki, blue team village. Do you want your real name? Cassandra from red team village. Oh, that's me. My real oh, I'm sorry. Savannah. <laughs> this is my life now. Savannah. Red Team Village. Do you want your real name? Yes. Matt, Aerospace. Now, Honey, what questions do you have for us, or do we self-moderate? Go for it. Why do we do what we do? What is the point of the villages? Or actually, we should do, uh, what do the villages do? What's the mission vision? Blah, 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 blah. I can start. I have a really adorable little story that I want to tell. Um, so Blue Team Village has been around for about se for seven years. This is our seventh year. Um, we started, you know, a ragtag bunch of different people who decided to throw a village together and had no idea what the hell they were doing, which is how DEF CON works in general, right? That's, that's a thing. Um, so um, we've been around for a few years. Over the pandemic, you know, we had to go virtual for DC28, and uh, around that time, um, we started a mentoring program. So met a lot of different people from all over the world, got to do some remote uh, events, you know, talks, things like that. Um, so this year, one of our first speakers, um, was actually someone who I had met who was um, from India and then kind of like progressed in their career with some help in the mentoring program. And he actually gave a talk uh, at Blue Team Village, did a really awesome job. And I got to give him an intro, which was really cool. But um, what really stuck out to me is like, you know, this, the villages are communities in, in them, themselves. They are organizations within DEF CON that, um, that really help bring people together based on common interests. Um, and being able to provide that space for someone to like learn and grow to network within the community and then be able to progress their career uh, to speak is just like, I, I get a little like crazy, so, you know, sometimes planning all this stuff and then watching it come together. And then, and I'm like, why, why am I doing this? And then like, I get to see someone who has grown because of what we do. And that's like the fucking coolest thing. So that's why I do this. I can add to that because I 100% agree with you. <clears throat> this is my fifth year running Karakin Village. Karakin Village has been around for 10 years. Uh, one of the biggest things I really encourage is trying to get younger people or newer people into this industry. Um, over the last three years, I've brought new people that weren't even security people at all. They were just tech people that are interested. Um, some of them from ages 17 to 20. And now two of them have uh, jobs in security and come here every year and are part of helping the village. So. Similar to her, this is the reason why I do this is to grow the communities and to grow the next versions of the, you know, us and people who can ensure that the world's going to be secure in the future. I really care about cyber physical systems, uh, as probably most of us up here on, the, on this panel do. Uh, so that's why I do what I do. Uh, I've also worked some in aerospace, but I just want to make sure the vehicles and stuff you guys are getting into are somewhat safe and trying to make the people up top care a little bit. It's kind of hard sometimes, but yeah. I do it for the people. Um, yeah, I guess I have to agree with what they were saying too. I think whenever there's a lot of like new students or people in general that come to DEF CON and they want to learn the specific niches. So like all of us are obviously in specific niches in the uh, cybersecurity space. And for example, like we had, I have a friend, uh, it's like a family friend of a friend, but he had come to DEF CON and had never been to anything like this. And he already had spoken to someone on Friday offering them an internship like within the village and like being able to provide that space where people can network and meet people is I would say anything in any industry, um, especially in ours, networking is so important, but then also giving a space to be able to have people grow like their offensive security skills um, and then also kind of take that over to other villages to learn other areas too. Okay, so I guess mine's a little bit different because um, I'll start off with I'm a pilot and um, there's a joke in there where like, how do you know you're at a party with a pilot? They'll tell you. So um, that's how I start all my talks. Uh, but the qualifier there is um, when I get in airplanes, when I'm flying them, um, I want to be comfortable with, you know, the risks that are inherent with just flying any airplane and not anybody on the ground or anybody in the back of the airplane doing anything that uh, they shouldn't be. And so I want to make sure um, the, the people on board my airplane are safe. 
Um, but one of the things that we find in the aerospace village is uh, while mentoring is is fantastic, we are just struggling to get the companies to show up, uh, the manufacturers, the uh, the people that build the systems in the airplanes. Everybody's got their their silos. Everybody wants to keep everything to be black boxes. And so we are really trying to get the manufacturers and, and all of those um, other companies involved and talking about the, the systems that they have on board the airplane because it is fascinating. Um, I mean, I can easily be flying an airplane, uh, a commercial airplane that is 20 years old and I can guarantee you 20 years ago they were not built with any sort of cybersecurity standard. So how are you bolting that on in today's world? It's uh, it needs to be talked about. And that's so that's what's driving me is, is sort of a, a selfish interest of uh, getting more attention paid to this space. I mean, I hate flying. So like I completely support that. Hey everyone, my name is Tom Van Norman with uh, ICS Village. We started ICS Village here 11 years ago. Time flies. Uh, so we are a registered nonprofit. We go many conferences throughout the year. We, we have sponsors, we have grants, we have all that fun stuff. But we started it 11 years ago, just a bunch of people that uh, uh, answered a call for villages, I think it was, and, and uh, applied for it and went. The reason I got into it was because back then, and not so much now, but a little bit now, we'd have people up on the stage, whether it's DEF CON or in a magazine or, or whatever, talking about hacking that PLC, hacking this thing, and they're full of shit. It didn't, they're just wrong on, on what, they're, what they're saying. So I come from control systems, engineering, technician, all that stuff out in the field doing things. And when we see people up on stage saying, oh, well, we can do this thing with that thing, all right, maybe, but it doesn't matter. It really does not matter. So instead of countering that person saying, hey, you know, you, you really don't know. Let's educate, let's uplift, let's go and spread. Instead of spreading FUD, let's go and show people what you can do, what matters, because not everything matters, right? You can put, we can secure your, your control system 80% pretty easy. The other 10% is hard and the other 10% is extremely hard. So let's, let's educate, let's make an awareness, let's do things for uh, the community, the, the people's things. And, and along the way, let's bring new blood in. We're all getting old. We're all going to retire here, right? And uh, let's bring new people in. I forgot what I was going to say. Yeah. Um, just wanted to say a couple things. Yeah, sorry. I'll say a couple things. So um, Pedro and I, um, we are the village leads, right? Um, and then Ray's, uh, we brought him on this year to just do, I, th I think it's just an outstanding job setting up these creator stages. Um, main focus for this right here is we wanted to kind of like uplift a lot of the content that um all the villages are bringing to defcon and give it you know recorded space um i know it's outside of the village spaces so it's not as conducive as what some some of you guys want all the time but um we really wanted to like sort of start up branding a lot of the content that you're bringing and that way we can have both the village um sponsors our village brand into it as as well on, on top of that as defcons um, the main thing though that like Pedro and I see for ourselves is we're kind of the middleman between DEF CON and the villages. Villages come to us and they have these crazy ideas of things that they're going to bring this year and we have to figure out, okay, how do we scope and tailor this with DEF CON to make sure that they can bring what they want to bring. <clears throat> Namely, you know, Nina brought some really, really cool stuff this year. One's like a giant robot. I can talk about that. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> But all those things basically they come with a cost in the sense of like square footage, which we have a finite amount for. So like for us, it is um, playing the middleman between DEF CON and, and the villages, village leads and making sure that we can support them as best as we possibly can. And also at the same time, sometimes the requests of like, hey, we need 20,000 square feet. We're like, uh, do you really though? We maybe yes. tailor that down a little bit. But um, um, I think Pedro and I like, we see the villages as, you know, some of the premier content at DEF CON. The, the value that they bring is outstanding. Um, a lot of the pen testing that occurs here is world class. The value, the return on investment a lot of the sponsors have when they come and they bring their, um, their devices, their vehicles, parts of their planes, the whole nine yards to DEF CON. And the amount of research CVEs that are produced by these villages is 
outstanding and in one weekend in comparison to like if you were to quantify that on the amount of pen tests and the amount of money they'd have to spend in in the normal market it's 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 insane so um i mean pedro and i are huge fans obviously because we stick around and keep doing this for some reason but we also wanted to say thank you so biohacking village has been around for 10 years i've run it for nine my first year of being with the biohacking village every single time on the that pamphlet that they give you it was completely wrong so i sat in the room and at some point they were like you keep sitting here what's wrong with you and i was like i want to be part of this let's hook up let's do this so anyway i've run it for nine years we have five different labs the device lab which is all the manufacturers the medical device manufacturers bring their wares hardware um, software firmware embedded whatever and they put the in front of the table and they ask the hacker community to break their shit it is not hyperbole. Over the last 16 hours, there have been 42 vulnerabilities found in 10, uh, from 10 medical device manufacturers, 25 devices. These are devices, most of these devices are things that currently live in hospitals. So in that room is $3.5 billion worth of medical devices and about $4 trillion worth of brain power and IP. We also have a capture the flag, um, tabletop exercises, talks, and something else that I never remember, workshops, that's what we do. So all of this takes 360 days to put together, two days to load in, and three days for a conference. We've already started talking about the badge for next year because this is very consuming. And I agree with a lot of the, the things that you said about how DEF CON is trying to help us and work through this. Biohacking Village has three times more space than we had last year, which is why this year we could bring a surgical robot. So it's it, the pincers are as big as like the ends of two needles trying to get tiny microscopic things out of people's bodies. That's what we have over there. If you have an opportunity, you should definitely play with it because this surgical robot lives in the hospitals. Um, our sponsors are the, the million dollar, billion dollar people. I am really harsh with people about how they need to be here and show up. The Biohacking Village has a partnership with the FDA where it's called Be Hard Hackers that they can, the manufacturers can write on their submissions that they were hacked at DEF CON. This is a big deal to them. They understand the, 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 the reasons behind it. The other part is we are, the biohacking village is a CNA. So if something is found and they can't report it, the manufacturers can't report it themselves, we will happily report it for them. Um, there was something else that I was gonna say, it was probably important. Oh, why do I do this? I am really fucking overwhelmed and tired of patients going into hospitals and being in a world of hurt and then the hospital doesn't work. So they may have to have their surgeries redone or they don't understand what's happening to them and nobody is able to explain it. Nobody should go to the hospital, get put attached to a machine and go, what is this? What am I doing here? And nobody has a real answer. When the blue screen of death recently happened because of CrowdStrike, I was working in the, I wasn't working in the hospital, I was working in the hospital. And it was just, I was blown away by the nurses and the staff that were like, we gotta go back to paper and I don't even know what the sheet says, I don't know how to do this. So for me, this is, this is one of those things that like sits in my soul about, we got to fix this. This is enough. We got to do it. I appreciate that because I had malpractice as a kid in surgery and I do not trust doctors or any hospitals or any of that. So thank oh, you for doing that. I want to add to that a little bit. Um, so, you know, I talked a lot about, or I talked about like, for me, the personal thing, like the mentoring and, and kind of bringing new people into the field. Um, one thing I love about being part of the blue team village is like, we cover all these areas. Like the people that come to learn about IR, threat hunting, um, CTI and things like that span every single field on this table. Like, you know, these are the people that are going out to, to do defense when there's a cyber attack against a hospital or, or, you know, an airline company or whatever. Though apparently it's really hard to hack planes, which is definitely good. <laughs> Makes me feel better as someone who hates flying. Um, you know, and then, that that's just to be like seeing all of these pieces come together is is really really cool and i've learned a lot from it yeah just love it got any more questions for us honey can we ask honey questions maybe we could talk about <laughs> sure i've got a neat question <laughs> So Nina, why don't you you talked about how you you're able to have the companies actually like say, hey, we were hacked at DEF CON. Um, how are you able to frame that in a positive light? Because um, we've tried 
Uh, so a lot of the um, aircraft and associated systems are certified. And so if anything happens to them, they are no longer certified. And so there's a, there's a very much a line between, hey, us tinkering with things and what actually goes on an airplane. Um, how are you able to get these manufacturers to say, hey, we want to do this. We want to brag about how we brought it to DEF CON because on our end, on the aviation side, people are nervous about saying, I brought my airplane, I brought my systems to DEF CON. We're slowly making progress, but yeah, how have you done that? That's a lot of aggressive hope and prayer. <laughs> um, so my background is I've worked in hospitals for 20 years and being in the hospital, so I worked on the electronic medical record and then the APIs and putting all of the devices into the EMR so all of the information would sync. And just watching how all of it happened, I was super annoyed. Um, my The moment is that one of the FDA humans is the medical device manufacturer, that's bullshit, um, the medical device cybersecurity director for CDRH at the FDA. She used to work for one of the medical device manufacturers and now she runs the thing at the FDA and she is super invested in ensuring patient safety. We're all patients at the end of the day. Whether you go to the doctor or not, you have an EMR somewhere, you have an MRN, medical record number, somewhere. So we are all affected by this no matter what happens. When they come up and they're like, this isn't for me. I'm, I'm not okay with this. I'm like, sure, but I'm, I'm aggressive. I think we all know that at this point. <laughs> um, I, I will go up to them and tell them their revenue, your revenue cycles will be affected by this. The ROI of them coming to DEF CON and bringing their devices here will say, you did this, you trusted this community to do the hard thing for you. What they do here is worth, what the, the vulnerabilities in the pen test here are worth about three, 350 to like $750,000 that they're getting for like nothing to do this. So they can come here, get all of their shit tested hardcore, go home and fix it. No big deal. They can report it or just say it's a finding and go fix it. How do you try to get there? Um, so great. I, if I have to get involved, that is a very different level of annoyance for them. Um, they have vulnerability disclosure programs that I'm like everything, that's a great question. So the device lives here. Oh, sorry. So I was just asking, like, how does she ensure that these vulnerabilities that they're finding actually get fixed? So it's cool to find all this stuff, but a lot of times you can't guarantee they get fixed. So just curious on how you track and monitor to ensure these vulnerabilities are getting fixed. So every day I send a number, an email back to everybody stating, this is the number of vulnerabilities we have. I talk to the hackers around, I talk to the manufacturers, and I collate, make sure everything is correct. Um, they have their own vulnerability disclosure programs that everything is supposed to be sent to immediately. If they have to go through me, as not just me, but as, through the biohacking village as a CNA, that becomes a CISA issue that they don't want to get involved with. So they, they, they're they pretty good at fixing so the things. Legislation on your side. We do have legislation on our side. That's nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why you're making more progress than most of us. Yeah, I guess, but I, I, so somebody at work told me I was wrong about a piece of law and I was like, I'm not wrong about what this is. And I started law school, so nobody likes me right now because I'm we always like, you, like it's not what we that like says. You. So Nina, yeah. I have to say, I have, I have to disagree. I'm gonna... I, I, I had to disagree with, with most of this stuff here, all right? Well, first you can talk about hospitals. We all need healthcare. Either we need it today, tomorrow, whatever. We, we all need healthcare. The, uh, if we don't have the ICS stuff, guess what doesn't work? Your robot, your other stuff, right? But the, so where, where I disagree with a lot of people here, I think coming here finding vulnerabilities is a horrible idea. From a business, I'm a business owner, is a horrible idea. Why? I don't know who you are. I don't know who you are. I don't know who you are. Now I leave here saying my device is secure because X, Y, and Z found vulnerabilities. Completely bad idea. Horrible idea. Where if I go and if I pay ABC company, uh, they still might not find the vulnerabilities, but now I have somebody to hold it accountable. Now I have somebody to go back and say, hey, you know what, guys, you you said you gave me a report and this this low hanging fruit thing was not found where I come to any conference and find a vulnerability and I leave with that good feeling that, hey, we found, what'd you say, how many vulnerabilities? 42, 42, interesting, really interesting. Did they ever but, but so, so if they're tested before they get here, how do they find 42? Do you want to go to the logistics of these companies? Oh, 
that we're leading is a leading question. Leading okay, question. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna interrupt and uh, and throw something else out there. So I think you can tell by this point that we're all really passionate about what we do, and we've all been doing it for a very long time, which brings up a really good point. So villages are separate organizations. We have very few people that have been invested for a long time. All of us, I think. Pretty much, we start planning pretty much right after DEF CON. We have a hot wash, we kind of review lessons, you know, go through lessons, learn, make some changes. At the end of the day, it's usually a few people at the very top of the organization that define like what the village does. And one of the issues that, you know, I, I think we have with that is people get burnt out. Um, you know, I don't know how Nina is functioning right now. I don't know how I'm functioning right now. I went to a metal festival in Germany and then flew in from Germany on Tuesday and hit the ground running because we had unload set up Wednesday, 12 hours in the village on Thursday. I didn't eat until like 9 p.m. I never made it to merch. I have like one 4XL, like just what I got. So I think it's like this kind of passion is great, but like, I don't know. I guess maybe my question to other panelists is how do you work on getting other people involved and because we, none of us are paid for this either. At least I'm not. I don't know. Are you getting paid? No. Yeah, no. <laughs> this is all volunteer work. We have full-time jobs. So how do each how do each of your villages handle like getting people involved so that you don't have to be completely run into the ground? Yeah, that's a really good question. So I'll start from the Karakin Village side. Um, we go to a lot of different events as well. So we don't just go to DEF CON. Uh, we do... Black Hat Middle East, we do a lot of different global events as well. So we try to get as much recognition as possible. And through that, typically we find a lot of people that have no clue what any of this stuff is or how to get into car hacking. So I usually like to try to bring them as volunteers because a lot of those people are pretty driven to want to learn and grow. And I don't mind if you don't know anything, we can teach you that. As long as you have motivation and drive, then we will welcome you in and bring you to, to help volunteer. So that's kind of been my philosophy. As long as I can find someone that's driven and motivated, I can teach them the ropes and bring them in. Um, and usually that's helped us a lot. So a lot of our volunteers within the last two years have been younger kids from graduating right out of college, some that are even younger than that, um, that are just really eager and seeing the stuff in the news about cars getting hacked and hearing about these things and just wanting to be involved. And then, you know, they send us an email or they see us at a conference and we're just like, hey, you seem pretty motivated and driven. Here's my contact information. Stay in contact with me and we'd love to have you volunteer. Um, it's worked really well for us, but it is kind of more ad hoc, so it is difficult, but um, we've tried to do call for volunteers in the past, and it gets a little bit chaotic because what you'll learn is you get a bunch of people that just want to get a badge, and they just want to get access to the event, and that's the most difficult thing to do is how do we find people that are going to be dedicated and stay in the village and not wander off and go do other things because we want to ensure we put on a show for you guys. We want to make sure you guys can actually come and hack a car or come and hack a medical device or rip apart an airplane or whatever it might be. So yeah, it's it's definitely a difficult thing to do. Call for volunteers is hard. Uh, I recommend trying to go to more events, but then that, that exhausts us all. Um, and on the exhaustion piece, if nobody see me yesterday, I had an IV in my arm. I don't even drink. I was just so dead and exhausted and didn't eat or dehydrated. So yeah, we're all very stubborn, dedicated people and we love what we do and we're just going to keep doing it until we can't. The uh, so we, we take a similar model to uh, to car hacking village. Uh, we don't do call for volunteers. We just get inundated with people that hit us up on LinkedIn, Twitter, whatever. Say, hey, we, we want to do something. Great, come come here, talk to us. At, and they don't show. And it takes a lot of recycles. I agree with Justin here that hey, when when you have a a, a person that comes up and says, I really want to help out here. Fantastic. Now now you approached me. Now you volunteered. Now let, let, let's go do this. It may or may not work out, but tell you what, we have people, I'll be doing this 11 years. We still have people from 10, 11 years ago that, that come around, uh, you know, hey, how, how can I help? They're not involved anymore uh, officially, but how can we help? What, what can we do? Do you need that stuff moved, set up? And, and, and we do that. The uh, one thing that we, uh, that we struggled with a long time is, is money, right? So DEF CON, very, very uh, uh, thankful we get get the badges we get, but you know what? It's going to cost us almost forty thousand bucks to be here. You all got forty thousand dollars, right? Real money. This is real money that that's coming out of our. The budgets are wild. So, so, so the, the one thing that, that that we what we do now is we find uh, sponsors, companies, people that want to be involved that pay their own way. SZA, or I'm sorry, INL has uh, escape rooms down there. Great. Bring that stuff. You're paying your own way. You're, you're, a, you're a lab, you're a corporation, whatever. 
that 30, 40,000 bucks is just for the village volunteers to come here, travel, shipping, stuff like that. Our shipping today will be I don't know, probably three, 4,000 bucks going on. I don't know what it was coming in when you get the bill yet, but uh, it's, it's real money, real money that, and it used to come out of our, our own pockets. Now we get sponsors and, and, and stuff to, to do this, but I saw you, you know, you had a tractor trailer down there. I bet you that was expensive. Even if they donated it, there's still a cost there. There's hours of coordination. There's, there's time, there's effort. And you probably have a real job, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. And, and Nina, you, you, you Thanks. work too, don't you? I mean, she'll sell it. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we have probably thousands of hours between all of us leading up to this event, starting next week. Uh, for for next year and hopefully you invite us back next year because if not we're gonna be really pissed if we start planning for next year and you don't invite us uh but yeah the uh anybody wants to get involved i'd highly recommend getting involved a couple years ago we, we uh we brought in the maritime so wave i see you guys back there there you go Ma the, the 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 uh uh maritime folks join icsy because i mean it's floating control system isn't it uh, so we have a lot of really, really, really cool stuff there, but it, we can't come here without people saying, Hey, I wanted to do that, this or that. And I want to help. I want to volunteer. And it could be raising money. It could be maintaining a website. It could be moving those boxes from, from A to B. So, you know, come down, talk and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll get you involved. I just want to reframe real quick. How many of you are, this is your first DEF CON? How many of you have gone to all the villages or seen all the villages? There's a lot of villages. I just wanted to see. Okay. Oh, I was just going to say, like, agreeing with Justin, too, with, like, actually going up at an event. I think some of the best volunteers that we kind of get at um, out of DEF CON are the ones that either, one, they never even signed up for a call for volunteer. They just offer to help. And they're the one who ends up staying, like, the entire time. And they end up being, like, a long-term volunteer. And it's so helpful to help, like, delegate out tasks with, like, the crowd control and whatnot. And then also, like, people that just have start, been with us from the beginning or, like, they're on a shift and then they notice people aren't showing up to volunteer. And then they end up sticking around. Like, it's so helpful to us to be able to put the village together because I think people don't realize how stressful it is like all of us leading up like everyone probably wants to kill each other like leading up to tefcon but we all love each other um yeah. yeah i think going kind of off of what tom was talking about with the logistics of getting things here and doing you know bringing a tractor here so we've been trying to do a, this tractor trailer or this tractor for the last three years it's uh last year they pulled out two weeks before so we had everything planned, we had everything ready to go. We worked with them, you know, we, we figured out we can get the vehicle in and everything. And the company was like, nope, cold feet and left. So we have to really quickly in two weeks figure out, okay, how do we bring another vehicle in? How do we do all this? So there's a lot of complexity and logistics that go on behind the scenes to ensure that there's actually a tractor tr here. So this year we're really happy to have one. And the company that brought it actually gave us their diagnostics laptop as well. And they said, have fun with it. Do whatever you want. We're shredding it in a machine when it's done. So you guys can have fun. <laughs> so it's really cool to see the progress that's happened over the years and the fact that now these companies are this open and willing to work with us and actually willing to give us their diagnostics laptop. I think that's wild. But yeah, it's a lot of logistics going on behind the scenes. I mean, that makes me really glad that at BTV, we, we have swag. Like, that's our shipping. <laughs> Nothing crazy, just swag. <laughs> we had a semi truck, a Rivian, and a Tesla. So, well, the Rivian was driven here. The semi truck, uh, it's it was Saya. So, if anybody knows S A I A, they're all over the the U S. So, it wasn't really hard for them to pick a truck out and get it here. Um, but yeah, it's it's a lot of logistics going on. So, I think one of the common law things that we all do with each other is we have chat groups with each other. And when something happens, it's did you see this? How's it affecting you? How's it affecting me? How do we how do we do the things? And I thought, I, I'm like you now, I lost my train of That time. always results in Nina calling us. I do. <laughs> so, Hody's up here like, it's really weird that all the villages are now asking the same question at the same time. <laughs> I know their call has occurred as soon as I start, we all, you know, Pedro and I start getting hit up by all of you at the same time with the exact same question. I, I don't know why they keep doing this. We must feel ganged up on like all the time. We actually do like them. They're great people. Thank you for what you do. Another interesting perspective I'll help you guys understand and don't kick me for this one, but DEF CON pays us nothing. They give us nothing. All they did this year, which was really awesome, they gave us hotel rooms. I really appreciated that. And that was something new um, that they did. So it's nice to see that Pedro and Honey are actually trying to take care of us more. In previous years, it's kind of been like, hey, call for villages. Cool. Do your own thing. Come on in. 
Um, so it's nice to see that DEF CON as an organization is, is actually caring about what we're bringing and what we're doing and trying to bring some value back to us to help with what we're doing. So sorry about that. No, you're good. He just whispered to me to be nice. I am well, going to be nice. I, let me. <laughs> so um, I think a good thing, and it's not in a perfect state yet, right? Um, well, I will say on the sponsorship side, Pedro and I, um, we started getting a little bit more recognition in some of the other places that we go. People are coming up to us. You know, our networks are saying, hey, Pedro and Honey, they're the village leads. And so, you know, we've had a couple sponsors walk up to us or people from different companies saying, hey, we would like to sponsor a village. So we try, we've tried to marry some of that stuff up. Um, I will say that I think a couple of them worked out and a few of them didn't, but like, we're always trying to do that. And I know like, you know, Kevin from DEF CON is definitely trying to do that. I think this is a little bit of a weird year with the Audible moving from Caesars to LVCC. I think that there was a little bit of gun shyness on some of those sides. So like, I think that we can definitely do a much better job for you guys. Um, I'm uh, hoping after this year that we get back on track with some of it. Um, you know, he mentioned the hotel rooms. So, um, there is a basically, a fund that comes in through, um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say it. So we get a fund basically. Yeah. Um, we get a fund of, of money, right? And it's decided on like how it's easiest to divvy it out. Um, previously we had done some stuff with them where we were able to supply them funds for food, um, during the con. Cause that's, I know a major pain point for them because they're stuck inside of a village. Food is, you know, 10 miles away because, you know, we're stuck inside of a convention center and you're not allowed to bring outside food and drink inside. Um, so like that was a pain point we tried to, uh, to help alleviate. Um, this year I thought we were doing it again, but I was told not. So we got hotel rooms for you guys. Um, and once again, like, you know, we're Pedro and I are pushing for better execution on a lot of these things. Um, we had everything set up and we had a different timeline than what we were given at the end of the day. Um, so we all, we're always pushing and trying to drive towards getting you guys as much information um, as possible. That way it's easier for you to plan and execute on things. That way you're also not spending money on something that we're going to hopefully provide to you type type deal as well. Um, but yeah. I had a question for everybody here. Can I go real quick for him? Yep. Uh-oh. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I, the... This is a point of admiration for real. Okay. Um, I've done this for 10 years, right? And I think two years ago when you took over, was it two? Pedro and I took over. Yeah. I had so many long discussions with them because I was, I am, I am really, village building is my passion. So, so many conversations with both of them to be like, this is how we as a group like to do the things. This is how we, we need timelines. We need help doing this, whatever, whatever, whatever. And they actually listened, which, um, from from the large DEF CON Corporation moment perspective, super helpful. So for me, at least this year, it was, honestly, this is the best year for the biohacking village. Hardly had to do anything because it was so well executed. So I that's, would agree. that's good for you. I would agree. Even, even with agree. changing facilities and buildings and all that chaos that happened, you guys still smoothed it out and made it pretty easy for us. So. Yeah, big kudos to you guys for that. I'll have you guys know that like in January, February, Pedro and I had everything laid out, mapped out, every process, every system. And then, you know, we get a phone call, hey, stop. And um, right, that's a good point because all of us were planning yeah. for whatever it was. Ooh. All of us were planning for our other hotels and we were super invested because we knew the blueprints, we were there. And then suddenly it was like, fuck you, DEF CON changed. It's like, oh God, what to where? What are we doing now? And then it was done. our messaging was softer than it that. Nice. So you're aware. <laughs> <laughs> and and it was all of us going. Well, where are we going to be? What are we going to do? How are we shipping? What's the cost? What are we doing? I know this is recorded. I curse a lot. Everybody knows. Um, so it was. It was. I think you softened it. Yes. And I think the transition to this year was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. I honestly felt so bad for both of you when I saw that. I was like, oh my god, they're going to be slammed. So we were. Blue Team Village is pretty organized. I mean, like, I like to joke that we're the most organized village because blue teamers are the people that have jobs and, you know, <laughs> are professional. I don't have a job. <laughs> <laughs> Them fighting words, yeah? I'm going to work tomorrow. Tell that to my employer, please. <laughs> so I, I do have a question. But, but, no, no, I'm not done yet. Hang on, hang on, hang on. You're going to give me a job? You can interview with me. We'll see how it goes. It'll be fine. <laughs> but um, I, I think... Um, Wait, I was going somewhere with that one. I think you made me lose my turn of thoughts. 
it's it, I, we're all dead. I, I think what I was really getting at was like, you know, we're we're really organized and we kind of have this consistent like uh, way that we do things and, and whatnot. So I, I was we were trying to do as much as possible by ourselves and answer our own questions and not like rely on Honey and Pedro so much because we knew that they were getting inundated with stuff. So um gonna jump on the train of like you guys are doing a great job. So can we actually give Honey and Pedro a round of applause? <laughs> Pedro is coming up here. Pedro. I've been waiting all day to say, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I just want to say that I picked up a, nug a few nuggets here and there, and I would just like to start off by saying that Honey and I are also not paid by De DEF CON. We are stipend volunteers. So just keep that in mind when everybody's asking for meetings nonstop. We also have families and lives and work and et cetera, right? I have two dogs that I love dearly. My children think that I love my dogs more than they than I love them, and sometimes they're right. <laughs> my dogs never talk back. Um, <laughs> regarding volunteers, a lot of first timers always ask, "How can I get involved?" Um, I'd just like to shout out to one of the new new to be goons next year. His name is Earth. He showed up early. I think it was Tuesday. He was like, "Hey, I'm here." Do you guys need anything helped us just like with loading in, counting badges? We had already counted badges at least five times. And he, since he was fresh blood, I was like, okay, do me a favor, open these boxes and start counting them one by one. We're talking about 930 plus badges. Um, then he was like, hey, if we're done here, I'm going to go check out and see if any of the villages need help. So next thing I know, he's down at Packet Hacking Village running cable. That was Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday, he came back to help us, and then he was like, okay, cool, I'm going back to packet hacking. So honestly, you know, reaching out via LinkedIn and trying to be like, hey, cool, let me in, and then never showing up, that's going to happen. But if you really want to get involved, the easiest thing to do is just to show up and just be like, I'm here, what do you need? Um, the well, other- reach out to you. you said LinkedIn. LinkedIn's a big thing. Oh, I'm, yeah. I mean, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn if you can find me. That, that's, a, that's a contest, right? Uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is that I want to say that I picked up a small tidbit over at Car Hacking. I do vulner vulnerability research in embedded systems, and I picked up a small tidbit. I'm contemplating buying a car, and I'm going for the jugular. So on Nina's behalf, I do think that these manufacturers should be working with us, you know, to try to find these vulnerabilities, get them disclosed and patched before it ends up in the public consumption. And so reaching over to ICS, like if you wanna live in the black box, people like me are gonna find it. I already know I already know what's there. I'm not gonna just put it out there because I wanna be the first one to go after it. So I'm kinda of in between Tom and Nina, literally. <laughs> um, and one of the things we did this year, I still have a question I wanna go back to that kinda of goes into volunteers, but one of the things we actually uh, were able to do this year is get the auto ISAC out here to help. Um, so if, for those that don't know what an ISAC is, it's an information sharing and analysis center. Um, they have one for automotive. So this is the first year they came out and sponsored and actually tried to be a part of DEF CON, which normally they're not because they're more on the blue team and monitoring side and trying to fix things. But this is one way we're trying to bridge the gaps is bringing you know, companies or organizations like that here to help when we do find things or we do have issues, they can at least work right away with the OEMs and submit that to them. Um, yeah, so I just wanted to say that, but the question I had, and I know we don't have much time because I can see that clock back there. Um, how many volunteers do you guys all have and how do you work with them regarding like times and shifts and stuff like that? Um, I'll start on my side and then I'll let it go down. Uh, so on our side, we have 35 volunteers and then about 20 other sponsors and people that come in. So I have about 60 to 70 people I deal with um, throughout this event that are always asking me for information. How do they you know, need this or need that and what time do they have to be at places? So outside of the logistics of planning and getting people here while we're here, it's just chaos. Like I'm literally trying to manage 70 people right now and it's insane because they're all like, hey, where are we eating? Where is this going on? Where is that going on? So it's very complex and difficult to do, and I'm curious on how some of you guys handle that because I could use some advice. Uh, so we have about 70 volunteers, if not maybe 80, and we, we have two leads that lead that, Mike and Danielle, and Mike actually like built out this whole custom uh, portal for us this year. I think he was telling, he's trying to tell other villages that he'll like help y'all like get it too. It's just something he like custom built to be able to kind of like assign shifts uh, because we do like they're like like we were mentioning earlier, we don't always have volunteers show up, so we always have to kind of like 
reach out to others and whatnot, but we do have those two people that are manage those, and we do have around 70 people that are volunteering throughout the con. And it's a lot of names to keep track of as well. And I'll let Matt. Yeah, so we have internal volunteers, and then um, a lot of our activities, uh, the companies that bring their own um, activities, um, they are sort of in charge of their own. So if you're a if you're a Boeing, if you're a Lockheed, um, and you bring ten people, it's up to you how you want to staff your activity. Um, for or Embry Riddle uh, through the Aviation ISAC, um, they brought. 15 students and they also just yeah so for their activity they were they we let them handle their own scheduling there's some activities where um it's literally two people and they are there every single hour uh for the entire con then internally we have our own set of volunteers um uh, about 20 or so people to help with workshops to help with um just organizing everything and thankfully we have a volunteer coordinator that takes care of all that and yeah we've got if we're trying some new software this year we'll see if that actually was a success or not i think so just to try and get things organized because all too often we are we're just shooting from the hip and saying okay i've got a need and who can do it right now yeah we have um we kind of split split them up a little bit so um we're a 501c3 nonprofit. We have um, board of directors. Um, so this year, it's basically myself and two of the other directors. Uh, shout out Crime Santa and Omen Scan. Um, that are we kind of start the initial planning, and then we kind of downstream to uh, consistent staff that we have. So basically, our leads. Um, so we have like Daniela and Satan who manage all the volunteers. Um, you know, we have Dufinga dealing with the CTF that we have. We do our own CTF. Um, you know, a whole bunch of other people that are involved in kind of organizing things. Uh, Cheerio handled all the workshops, like, you know, things like that. And then we have also some day volunteers where we'll sign like, you know, doors and kind of that, that crowd management info booth, things like that. Um, I, I would say like staff wise, so three, three directors, staff wise, maybe 10 to 15 that are involved in the, the actual planning phase. And then we wind up with anywhere between like 30 and 70 volunteers, depending on um, who shows up. <laughs> so please come if you volunteer <laughs> yeah and it, the the badge thing is always challenging because uh, you know we do get badges from from defcon that we try to give to the volunteers but we want to make sure that they go to the people that show up year after year and that's always a challenge i knew the spice was coming <laughs> not even that spicy so, yeah well let, since we're on that topic let's talk about badges so as village log logistics advocates we have a finite pool of badges that we can sprinkle across all the content creators. Um, we have secret shoppers. I don't know if you know this, but we have secret shoppers that are evaluating you. You'll never pick them out. And then we get feedback. And based off of that feedback, that's how we're also providing quantifiable, you know, metrics to DEF CON to try to advocate for more badges for villages. So, uh, one of the things that constantly comes across to us is how can I get more badges? There, there's always going to be a limit, right? Just because each village thinks that they need the most badges and each village needs it, thinks they need the most space, but we only have so much to spread around. So you will normally get questions from us and we will usually ask for justifications. Sometimes, you know, depending on the, on the request, we'll even go as far as like provide us a schedule of who's working for how long. The, the, the uh, I'll comment on that. If you really want that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going there. So, Jeez. so we, we've been, we've been doing this for uh, for eleven years now, and we're going to be thirty, forty thousand dollars into this. A lot of freaking money, right? Not even counting the hardware or or any. And, and our sponsors will go and, and bring stuff, and we're not we're not uh, counting that money. I don't think I've ever been asked by DefCon what we put into things. How many thousands of hours and how many tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of dollars. We're asking for a a badge that, I don't know, what's this thing, $60, $70 for a badge? No, 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 that's retail. What's the thing cost? 75 bucks. So when we're putting in tens of thousands of dollars, and that, that those questions never come back to us and, hey, what did you put in? But we're constantly fighting for poker chips for food or a couple of hotel rooms. Extremely, I think we're all extremely grateful for everything it still seems one way on what we're doing here. So, you know, we, uh, we got 40 badges, we bought 20, you know, so we have 60 badges. 
put fifteen thousand dollars into the, the pot here for for the other badges. All right, ten minutes. The uh, sell us these things at cost. These things aren't five hundred bucks. They're seventy five dollars. Some to us a cost because we are down in that village, nonstop. Um, I'll give you the CEO response type style because um, I don't want to get myself into trouble. Um, I will say that everything you see at DEF CON costs money. Oh, yeah. 100%. And the, um, everything in your village, you pay nothing to be in the village. Yep. The space, the floor, the real estate, um, all the requests that you have, DEF CON is paying for that. i um, not going to go into how much that is because even I personally don't know how much that is because I'm not, we're not privy to that knowledge, right? But I know that DEF CON does invest a lot of money for the real estate, for the space, and for a lot of the logistics that go into it. I'm not taken away from anything that the villages do um, as far as that goes because I understand Nina and a few of the other leads have kind of expressed to me like, hey, this is what we're investing in this. And trust me, Pedro and I are cognizant of it. Um, and that's why we're trying to push for more sponsorship and everything else like that for you. Um, from DEF CON's perspective, the badge does mean something more than just the 70 bucks. Um, that is access to the con itself. And so there is a drastic difference between, hey, I have you know 50 volunteers who are coming and they're working the entire time. Like, okay, that's easier justification. Or I have somebody who's gonna come teach a 30 minute workshop, I want a badge. There's a drastic difference yeah. between the two of those. So like, we don't do that. Yet. I'm not saying you, I'm not saying you, but <laughs> There are some instances where we are trying to kind of clean that up because one, it's not fair to ICS Village if we're giving 80 badges to somebody and that's what they're doing and you're, you know, sitting at 50, right? Or some of those lines, right? Someone got 80 uh, We want to make sure it's equitable across the... <laughs> We want to make sure it's, these are all fake numbers, it's okay. Um, we want to make sure that it's equitable across the board, right? And that, you know, the support that we're, we're giving out is appropriate. Um, a lot of times we're also not making the decision. We are advocating for you. When we ask for the justifications, not because Pedro and I want to be nosy and be on, inside your business, is that way when, when, when we take that information and we're going and we're advocating, we're arguing for you. You know, there are behind backroom deals that we're trying to work for you to ensure that you guys get as much support as we possibly can for you. And that's our entire role in this. So I'm going to pivot off that real quick. I had one quick thing to add. Oh, hold on. It's really quick. small. I just want to say one thing, six minute warning. <laughs> oh, I, I just want to say, wait for it, wait for it. I think maybe when Kevin or you guys took over, I can't remember, but prior to that, us village leads and the ones that run everything, we used to only get like three or four of these. So with having a staff of 30 or 40 people and only getting three or four of these and trying to bring people in and out, what we're setting up is very difficult. So it's been very nice that over the last few years, they've been able to get us like 20 badges or 30 badges because that's actually the amount of staff that we have and then I don't, we don't have the issues of people coming in and out during setup so I just want to say that there has been a lot of improvements in the badges and getting us that access because prior to it it was like you'd give it they'd give us four maybe five and it's like uh it's not really helping us so they, they have definitely helped us a lot more on that side so what I was going to add I think someone you know I heard the word equitable and I, it triggered something so the the main reason that that I think you know we really, really want to have more you know badges is because we have volunteers year over year who are newer to the industry could really benefit from being here at DEF CON but don't have the financial resources to to afford much so they're splitting ho shitty hotel rooms getting cheap flights and you know 400 plus dollars for a badge is actually quite a lot so and that's one of the things that we can quantifiably provide to those volunteers and and staff i that's ultimately like we're here to provide content to people i think a secondary reason that we're here is to help people grow in their careers and to help them network like we've had as blue team village we've had so many people get jobs because of volunteering for the village actually my, my last two jobs i got because of people i knew from blue team village and i wouldn't have been able to do that if i couldn't afford to come here and volunteer originally my question is what are you doing with any of the money you might make because it's what we do is all the money we're making during this. So we sell badges, obviously. We're a nonprofit organization as well. Uh, the way our board works is all the money we make from this, we dump back into this. None of us make any of yeah, it. None yeah. of us keep any of it. That's why we're giving away a car this year. But we take our money and we pour it right back into DEF CON. So I'm just curious what you guys are doing with your money because I try to, like this year, I knew one of my volunteers that, that came out, a younger kid, kind of from a family that doesn't have a lot of finances and I was able to you know buy his flight and help him get out here and I've done that with a lot of other people as well I know like 
you know, Kamel's right here in the, in the stands. He's from Japan. We flew him out here. So we try to do the best we can to fund our staff as well outside of what DEF CON gives us based off of what you guys are giving to us through, you know, badges or other things like that. So. Yeah, that's a constant thing that we're working on, trying to bring it back to supporting the people that, <clears throat> that make this village possible. And um, I think, Nina, you know, I've, I've had some side conversations about that. So um, maybe I'll hand it over to you and you can add to that for two minutes. Five minute warning. 50 seconds on the clock. <laughs> um, so we're just going, circling back to the other question, there's eight people on the core for us. And then it's, this year we have 25 people that are bringing people in through the Hippocratic um, oath thing. But at the end of the day, there's about 300 people that I am managing that one, I've probably never met before, and two, that are highly committed to doing village stuff. A lot of them don't end up leaving the village because it's highly interactive, it's immersive, all of that. Um, I don't remember your question. What do we do with the money? Yeah. Is that what we would do with the money? Sorry. Like supporting volunteers. Oh, supporting volunteers. Um, I, I, ooh, there's a lot of work that goes into this. So I pay for at least the core people, I pay for their flights, I pay for their hotels, I give them a stipend, and everybody is 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 on their way because, again, this is, it's eight hours that the, the attendees get to be in the room, but it's like a 12 hour day for all of us because they're still set up and there's, yeah. Because, like 14, 15, most oh no, I mean during the con, oh. because before that we're here for like forever. Um, and it's, it's ensuring that the attendees get the experience that they came here for, right? You're paying a lot for this conference. We want you to have everything that you need to, one, be involved, two, three, oh my God, English is hard today, two, be invested. Um, the other part of this is, what do we do with the money? It just gets poured back in. This year, Biohacking Village is functioning at a loss because there's, to a lot of the points, right? There's a lot of investment that we had to do. We are not getting a lot of the money back because we just, our, our prices aren't high because we need everybody to do the things. So at the end of the day, it's what conference are we going to next? How do we get support from the people in this room, the sponsors, the community, DEF CON, things like that. Any last questions before we have to stop? There's a question. We got a question out here. So we're, so we're not associated with Yeah, we're not so yeah, none of us are subsidiaries. So he asked us, are we all 5013Cs and are we subsidiaries of, yeah, English is hard, uh, are we subsidiaries of DEF CON? And the answer of the 5013C is it's spotty. Some of us are, some of us might not be, uh, but none of us are subsidiaries of DEF CON. We are all independent organizations. Yeah, so a lot of the villages, though, and a lot of the newer ones, I, I think, are the ones that aren't 5013Cs. Um, we, are, we encourage them to push that way because it actually changes a lot of the landscape for them at DEF CON. Um, and it opens up some um, additional funding avenues potentially in the future for us, for them as well. So, um. <laughs> what is the corporate structure of DEF CON itself? That's probably outside the scope of this panel. Yeah, and we got two minutes. Tony doesn't want to answer that either. I definitely don't want to answer that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean, maybe, maybe do like a 30 second, like for each wrap up or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah go for it. You want to go first? For what? Yeah, for a second wrap up. Oh. Uh, come down to Ice Chase Village. You'll you'll see you'll see everything we have: escape rooms, and sponsors, volunteers, all that other stuff. Got really cool hands-on things. Remember, ICS is in manufacturing cars in the hospitals. We do have we do have jobs also. Uh, airports. We without without ICS, airports don't work. So we're everywhere. Come down, talk to us. Uh, yes, here. Sweet, Tom. So you're going to take my job, right? Yes. You own all of us. So it sounds like Tom's sure. next. Sweet. Cool. Thanks. Yeah, so Justin Carrick Village, uh, definitely come check us out. We got a tractor here, semi truck. Uh, we have Rivian who actually put a CTF in their vehicle, so you can actually hack their vehicle. Uh, obviously, they're, it's not a vulnerability in the car. They made it vulnerable themselves and put flags in it. Uh, so it's really cool. And we're also giving you a, a Tesla for our first place prize. And outside of that, we've also done stuff for kids this year. We have a kids badge that we've been giving away um, to the kids. And yeah, we're just trying to do as much as we can to give back to the community and making sure that all the money that you guys might give us, either through donations or through badges, we pour it back into this event so that way we can keep running it every year and go bigger and bigger if we can. Everything they said and come to the biohacking village, you are all patients. You should all be very concerned about the, the vulnerabilities in these medical devices um, because they will affect your life. And every single one of these villages impacts biohacking village and the medical care you do get. Uh, I'll keep it brief and just to say, uh, if you're thinking about getting involved with the village, go volunteer. It'll change your life.
come see the Red Team Village. We have lots of workshops and talks still today. Most of us are, I think, closing probably like around like 12-ish today, but still come see us. We'd love to have you guys. Lots of swag at Red Team Village still. So please come and take it all. Okay. Airplanes are cool. Space is cool. <laughs> Drones are cool. Come see us in Aerospace Village. Pilots are cool. My 10 second spiel is uh, Pedro and I have quit at least four times each this year. Um, the only reason that we're still around is because we've done it on alternating um, points, but also because of these amazing people, all the village leaders, they do an amazing job for, um, bringing content to DEF CON. Thank I'm you. I'm just here for the swag. Woo -woo. And to hat cars. <laughs>